Hey, this is Xavier Bignali at Microchip here. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement the ECC 608 Trust Manager with the Keystream software service from Kudalski IoT. Let's go to the Trust Manager page directly and go to uh, microchip.com slash Trust Manager. Hit it and it takes you directly to the page where we want to navigate. First and foremost, you'll be getting to create your Keystream accounts. Learn more about the 608 TM and GTLS, the Trust Manager uh, device. That's where you'll find the data sheet. You'll find some explanation and highlights of the value propositions. Uh, further down, there'll be two claiming flow that I'll talk about in the rest of the video, the auto claim flow and the claim by manifest flow. Again, I'll get more in details later on. At the bottom, you'll find the link to this video and a blog and also a link to the GitHub library, library from Kudalski called Keystream Trusted Agent. I'll refer to it as KTA. The last button that's pretty interesting here at the, at the end of the page, contact the Trust Manager marketing team. So that's me and my peers will be here to answer your questions. So you'll land on this page here once you clicked on the download button uh, for the Trust Platform Design Suite. Uh, it's supported by various OS platforms. I'm on the Windows OS, so that's what I'll be doing. I've already done it, so I'm actually not going to go through every single step, but read the installation manual. There's some crucial operation, not many, but you need to set up the right path to link the MP lab and the TPDS, probably one of the most crucial one. Once you've ordered the kit, this is the development board that you will be receiving. You'll see a SAM D21, Cortex-M0 from ARM. You'll see the debugger here. You'll see the trust manager right here and the Microbus uh, footprints from Microelectronica to come and plug this Wi-Fi board. So this Wi-Fi board here, you'll buy it separately from microe.com. It's the Wi-Fi Click 7, so go to microe.com, order it. Then once you order it, you'll see you'll have a, a little cut here on the, uh, on the corner, and that's the orientation you'll want to plug your Wi-Fi board in. As you can see, there's a little line here that lines up with this angle and you're ready to use your development kit. So now we're going to fire up TPDS and look for it in your menu. I'm clicking there and essentially I've got this window here that pops up. I'm going to click, yes, I want the update. You want to make sure you run on the TPDS 2.3.9. Okay, I'm going to click yes and run to the update. As TPDS has been fetching all the updates, it's going to ask you, do you want to actually update the packages it found? You click yes. Now TPDS tells you the package was installed. Do you need to restart the application? Click OK, and this is what we're going to do. Do I want to exit? Yes. I'm restarting TPDS again. So if you're working with an old version, you would not see the trust manager. As your update supposedly working, you will see the trust manager up, uh, appearing in the home page. Let's go to use cases here, scroll the way down. We see the trust manager with nothing on it there. So there's one last update to do. Go to utilities, package manager, scroll all the way down. And at the bottom, you are going to see this uh, line item about TPDS extension Keystream Connect. I'm going to click on the box. Scroll the way up back up, install the selected package, accept the license, and we wait for the installation to come. The installation is done. We need to restart TPDS. I'm going to close TPDS. And I'm going to restart it. Once there, we go to use cases, and the use case appear. We click on it. The use case is pulled up. You can go immediately to use case implementation and look at the uh, device configuration that tells you all the keys we'll be working with, tells you all the step in the Trust Platform Design Suite use case we're going to be taking. Scroll down a little bit further. Here's your kit that we talked about a minute ago. At this point in the process, the first thing to do is to read the use case help. There's a ton of information here. You see that little tab on the top left that pulls up. Uh, we tell you how to create the AWS account, which is what we're going to do first. Create the Keystream accounts, create your root CA, um, plug the, the, the development kit, work with the development kit, set up the credentials, load the credentials be, uh, from Keystream into your embedded system, from AWS to your embedded system, and reconcile everything. Look at the first thing the manual setting is make sure the path is set up under file preference and system setting. 
Immediately, I'm going under File, Preference, and System Setting. Here's my application. I'm going to go and fetch my uh, uh, MPLabX. And they give, we give you an example here under Program File, x86. And I think mine is under um, Program File, Microchip, MPLab, 6.2, and that's my path. That's super important for later on, okay? That's done. Here for the AWS setup, essentially we're giving you a cloud formation script that's gonna take care of all the implementation of your AWS accounts. We'll give you some guidance that were provided to us by AWS on the bare minimum to, um, to set up your accounts. So follow the instructions there and you'll be fine. So what I've done here, I went to aws.com, logged in, and then what I wanna do is go, you, go into my cloud formation and show you what I've done. I can go through the shortcut here. You can simply type cloud formation. That's going to show up at the top. And the end result is what I'm going to show you first. The end result is you want to stack create it, call it whatever you want. I call it trust manager because in this stack here, I'm going to have something important in my output. I'm going to have the access key and secret access key. That's all the two fields that I'm going to feed into TPDS. How did we get there? So from CloudFormation, you want to create a stack. You're going to upload a template, choose a file. You have to navigate in your um, on your laptop where you install TPDS. So I'm going to go under user. That's only what's installed. I'm going to find myself as a user. I've got a lot of user in that laptop. Uh, and I'm going to find this uh, folder called dot trust platform click there and this is where your cloud formation script is located you have the aws zero touch full setup yaml and you have the dash cn for china if you're in china use this file here so i'm going to use the file for the us here it's finding it and i'm going through the next step uh, i'm going to call it trust manager read carefully what they're telling you here you got to uh, read the, the character expectation. I want to create these things called ZT username. You call it however you want. Again, uh, for the sake of the video, I'm going to say sub1234. I think they have AWS expectation on special character for this password, so be careful. Nothing here to worry about. Click next. Nothing here to worry about except accepting the terms. If I click Submit, I'm going to create my stack. I'm not going to do it. I've already done it and I know it works. That's what you're done with the AWS setup. It was that quick. Going back into our Trust Manager page, we're going to create a Keystream account. My page is already uploaded. I'm going to register you for the registration process and I'll navigate you through the next step. If you already created an account, the way to go back, you go to the same link, connect to Keystream, and here we are in the Keystream environment. Going back to the user manual, we created the account, we signed it, now we need to create a fleet profile. So I'll show you all of the procedure course, uh, related to creating your fleet profile. So in Kudas KIT, go to fleet management, create, fill in the necessary uh, fields here. You can have a model, brand, manufacturer. Click next, this is where the money is. We are creating right now a one tier PKI, so one level underneath the root device, directly the root here. I'm gonna give it uh, a common name, I'm going to call it video again, an organization name, uh, validity for the root, validity for the device search, and I can even select an automatic renewal of the certificate, let's say every uh, 300 days, for example, it's in days, okay? I commit, and what I've done here, I created a root CA, a device certificate underneath that root inside an HSM that's hosted and managed by Kulaski that you own. That's your custom PKI. Again, it only took seconds, right? Now we're back into TPDS, and we need to create a manifest file that represents the public credentials associated to the ECC 608 that Keystream will need. So I click on that number one, and immediately you can see my manifest file is JSON file that was generated at that path here. So under the Keystream Connect, Light Manifest, 
uh, the dot zip file. I'm going to click OK, maybe take a screenshot, take a note where it's at. That's done. Again, now I'm going to register uh, my device. I'm going to load the manifest into my Keystream immediately. I'm going to go to device ownership and I'm going to uh, claim the device by the manifest. So device claiming, um, I'm going to delete this here because that's not the methodology I'm going to the method the methodology I'm going to use the manifest file. So I'm going to go into my uh, .pass from Keystream Connect like manifest. Here's my zip file and the second layer here. I'm going to open this. It's loading in TPDS and I'm going to import it. I'm making sure FA01. I don't have that device in the in this um, in this profile, so that's good. Tuck. So FA01 is located here. So now my manifest that contains the public key, the searched by default created by microchip, is loaded into my account. I can go to the next step back in TPDS and start to load the credential. Now I have to give all the credentials um, of AWS, of Keystream, into TPDS so that TPDS reconciles Keystream, AWS, and my embedded system. So we start by the fleet uh, profile UID. So I'm going back into my Keystream, uh, reduce that. I'm going to get my video uh, field profile. Here, I need to make sure I don't have any space or anything like that. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, see there, I had one here. Uh, Wi-Fi SSID and Wi-Fi passwords. I'm going to punch that in quickly. Now I'm going to go and get the authentication token from Keystream. Going to Keystream. Reduce that. I need to go into System. So I'm going to create an API key for that. Make sure I create an API key. I'm going to call it video, consistent. The role, it's an admin, validity. I'm not going to put anything, I'm going to commit to that. And now I've got my video API key. So what I need to do is edit it. You click on the pencil, go to that basic credentials API key here. Um, you're going to have to see it, copy it, hide it, close back into TPDS. Now you can paste it. Again, make sure you don't have any, see that space again here? Make sure you delete that. Now we go into AWS, and I showed you where to go before. So now I need to go to um, CloudFormation again. Formation, where I have my Trust Manager stack. Remember the outputs and create, copy the access key. Make sure I don't have any space, no, that's good. Secret access key, that's good. And then the region is right here on the top right, US East 2, US East 2. I'm submitting that to TPDS, I'm going back to TPDS here. A second step is executed successfully. So now step three, four, and five, you click on the numbers again, right? TPDS can automatically reconcile the, um, the Keystream SaaS to AWS and the embedded system. So what it's doing here, it's downloading the CS search from Keystream. The next step I'm clicking on it, it's gonna get the registration code from TPDS and you can follow the operations here. The step five, it's downloading the proof of possession certificate from Keystream. And now it's going to upload and verify the certificate authority and the proof of possession certificates with AWS. Now everything is connected together. The embedded system with Keystream with AWS. We're done with TPDS. What we're going to do now is to click on the MPLAB project button. Essentially, it's going to load your MPLAB project. For the sake of time, we've already done that. Remember, your kit is still plugged, so I'm going to simply do um, go to properties here. Make sure I have the latest version of the DFP, latest version of the compiler. Click OK. 
you go to the drop down menu, you can select Coop implementation or an SHTP implementation. I'm going to stick with the Coop implementation by default. Let's start to uh, build the program. Select your tool, which is the crypto auth. Click OK. The programming is complete. Now we're going to make and program the device. Now all I have to do is reset the, the board here. There is a reset button. If you look at the side here, right on the side, again, on that side, I'm pressing on it. And what should happen, it should hit the hot spot that I have here. Let's prove everything works. So the way we're gonna go at it is by going into your AWS account. So I'm inside, we'll do it again for you guys into IoT Core, that's already set up by the CloudFormation, right? I'm going to go under security and check out the, the certificate authorities. I said we are uploading one. So today, look at my clock, July 15th, looking for July 15th. That's when I updated my route, remember when I did the setup with TPDS. The second thing you want to check is if your device was correctly onboarded in Keystream. And we're going to take a look at it by going to my devices and you see I have this third device under the video fleet profile that was onboarded on the 15th of July. So this proves our device is into Keystream. We also want to make sure our device is in AWS and that Keystream has done its job to actually um, load the certificate into AWS. So for that, we're going to go under, I'm going to go into IoT Core in AWS. Under all devices, things, I've checked before, so I know my first device is the right one. I'm going to select it, go under Device Shadow, and look at the date here again, 15th of July. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check all those details again at microchip.com slash trust manager.